probably one of the hardest decisions that I've ever had to make. But when I sat back and, and took the time to, to really think, and I feel it's I feel it's the right time, uh, both for, for me as as a player and as a person, uh, for us as a family, and, and probably and for the Scotland team as well. Uh, yeah, I'll be going to work today as well. The bin men are out there. Well, stay, it's freezing out there. You want up? How come? What? <coughs> yes. Um, what is it? Where are we going to school? We're going to school in about five minutes. Don't want to leave too early, do we? No. No. Have you had enough breakfast? Yeah. Yeah? Hello, driver! <laughs> Hello! Hello, baby driver! <laughs> <laughs> See what I have to put up every uh, morning. Brilliant. This is meant to be my day off. Yeah, I like to take on a school on my day off, actually, trying. Well, one, to give Rachel a rest, mm -hmm. um, and two, yeah, it's nice to spend a little bit of time with the boys. They usually get one day off in the week. Um, today is Thursday, so we're, we're usually a Wednesday, but we play on Sunday this week, so we're, we're a day later. <laughs> Some boy. <laughs> huh? <laughs> right, three. <laughs> hey, Debbie took no longer be waking people up. <laughs> yeah, we're very happy. It's um, it's an excellent part of the world. Uh, really good people here in Claremont, um, and I think the uh, the club's uh, really well run as well. So uh, I mean that helps a lot. But we've certainly it's been not all plain sailing. So it's got its challenges moving away to a foreign country that speaks a different language. But we've, we've embraced the challenge. We've had good fun, and yeah, we're looking forward to, to the rest of it that lies ahead. Oh, nice. Huh? On the house, eh? On the house. Don't get many in, it must have been you. So this is the centre of the town now, Plastic Road. Oh, but it's, it's nice, Claremont's nice. Uh, it gets, I think it gets quite a hard reputation, but it's actually quite a nice place. Uh. Mm. Christmas markets and stuff are up the top here. Yeah. Bonjour. C'est quoi? Oof. Merci. Captain's injured, but Greg Laidlaw looks like he's going to be coming on. And here he is for a moment. What a scoreline to come on to, but it is a first cap for Greg Laidlaw at Scrum a familiar name, nephew of the great Roy Laidlaw. Yeah, I was, I was pretty nervous, obviously, um, being on the bench for the first time for, for Scotland and, and realising uh, you know, I could potentially make my first cap. And uh, you know, thanks to Mike, you got, uh, <laughs> you got a bang of the head after about 25, 30 minutes, um, and then I was, I was chucked on. Um, you know, straight into the fire in essence, we were playing against the All Blacks and uh, we were a couple of points behind, um, put, it, put it that way. Um, so I think when it's your first cap, you, it's difficult sometimes to take everything in and I was just, I think, in awe of, of everything and, and being able to, to play for Scotland uh, and realise my, my boyhood dream was, was unbelievable experience and, you know, to, to be on the Murrayfield uh, pitch alongside uh, some of the great Scottish players, but you know, certainly that day, I think Dan Carter, uh, Richie McCaw were, were playing for New Zealand. So, yeah, it was, it was an incredible, uh, incredible day, and, and certainly one I'll never forget. Your first cap there is there is the team sheet and the photo of you with your cap. What an interesting team, man! And the few boys still going. A few boys still going. Big Richie Grace in there as well. Um, yeah. he, Richie was starting in that game. Uh, Barks. Um, yeah, I think there's not too many more still playing, but yeah, that's that was a good team. Um, most Kelly Brown's in there. You had Mike at nine. Um, Waggers on the bench alongside myself, Ross Rennie, 
who Orozco was an outstanding uh, talent. Sadly, his career was cut short through injury. And, uh, you know, and so it's funny when you look at things like that, you, things pop up into your mind and you think about people and players and, and good times you've had. Yeah, and you look at the opposition as well. I mean, that's not a that's not New Zealand B team, is it? That's that's some lineup for you to make your debut against. Dan Carter at ten, Richie McCaw captain at seven. Certainly. Oh, there you go. Ice. I've actually just noticed that now. Ice Toyaba. I'll need to talk to him and see if he actually did play in that game. He's my teammate here at Claremont now. Mm. I never even realised they played in that wow. game. Until now. The weather in that game was atrocious. You got the winning kick. What was going through your mind? Yeah, oh, don't miss. <laughs> <laughs> was going through my mind. There's Ross Rennie then actually holding the ball. So it must have been Ross. He must have held the ball pretty well for me to kick it over. It was, yeah, it was, I think, just outside the 22. If I, if I remember it wasn't too far, but right in front of the stick, so you don't want to miss kicks like that, otherwise people will remember them for, forever. It's just a pity we've not got another couple of photos because <laughs> you'll probably remember well that Al Strokosh and Joe Ansborough came in in the, the famous incident yeah. and they ended up uh, bashing heads and I think Joe, Joe actually <laughs> missed the next game because he really? had so many, so many stitches in his eye. <laughs> I mean, if, if you bang heads with strokes, you're probably going to come yeah. off second best, aren't you? Looks like he's got a hard head. There was actually a present um, of my, my Uncle Roy and my Auntie Joy um, for, for my first cap. Um, so that was a little gift of them of, uh, of Riverside where it all started. So I'll take pride of place in, uh, in the house when, when we ever come back to Scotland at some point. Yeah, so I've, I've taken the, um, the emotionally uh, extremely difficult decision to, to step away from Test uh, Match Rugby with uh, immediate effects. So I'll be retiring, retiring from uh, international rugby uh, as of now, um, which, uh, as I said, more emotionally, um, probably one of the hardest decisions that I've ever had to make. But when I sat back and, and took the time to, to really think, and I feel it's, I feel it's the right time, uh, both for, for me as as a player and as a person, for us as a family and, and probably and for the Scotland team as well. I think uh, World Cups are uh, probably a good time for, for transition. Uh, you know, it's never going to last forever, uh, sadly. So, and I think that I've always been passionate about. You only ever get a certain amount of time in the jersey, um, and. You need to give the jersey everything, everything you can, and I, and I feel I've done that. And you know, my time sadly now come to an end, and you know I look forward to to watching the boys uh, pull on the blue jerseys, and, and I'll be right behind the team uh, going forward. When you take the emotion away from it, which for me is hard to do because I'm, I'm an extremely passionate Scotsman, and it's been a massive part of my life, and, and it always will be. Um, it was hard, um, but as I said, when when I, when I did remove that emotion. I felt it was, it was the right time, um, the right time both for, for the team uh, and for me and I've given everything I can and, and now it's up to, to the young boys and certainly my rugby journey is uh, not over, you know, I'm, I'm still playing um, professionally which um, uh, I'll, be, I'll be looking to do uh, for the foreseeable future uh, but in terms of international uh, commitment I just felt that the timing was right. Yeah, I struggled a bit on the, on on that day. Um, I, I'd been thinking about stepping away after the World Cup, and that was probably my initial thought. So I probably wasn't. I was probably ninety percent certain it was going to be my last game at Murrayfield, and, and so it was difficult. Uh, it was probably made even more difficult when you know, I seen all my family in the stand, which <laughs> sometimes you, you try and avoid seeing them because it's uh, it's an emotional time singing the anthem and. 
I was just glad I was I was able to do it and, and play with uh, play with some of my good mates, Hoggy, Finn, uh, boys like that, Sean Mayland. So I think to share that experience uh, with them was was outstanding. And, you know, I thought about announcing uh, something before it, but I just didn't feel that was the right time. I just wanted to, to concentrate on playing good rugby, you know, what, and not having uh, any other distractions for the team. So any time you get to do it is, is special, and, and certainly that's a day I'll remember. And, and we beat a good French team as well, which is that's ultimately what it's all about. When you're given the honour of, of, of captain and being leader, it's obviously an expectation. I know you put that on your, your own shoulders as well, but how much do you enjoy leading? Uh, it's, it's a good question. It's, um, well, listen, I think, you know, for whatever reason, um, you know, I've, I've been selected for ca as a captain over my career, and so obviously, obviously somebody sees something in me. Um, I enjoy it because I enjoy the challenge and I think you know, I enjoy being part of the group and, and giving the group energy and, and that's been a big part of, of who I am as a, as a player and as a person and, and I just like trying to bring the best out in people I, I guess and uh, you know obviously some coaches uh, have picked me over the years and you know I just you know certainly standing in, in the tunnel um, you know ready to run out of Murrayfield there's nothing can replicate that nothing beats it. Uh, and you know some of the, some, the fondest memories of my, my, my career, my Scotland career, will be standing in the tunnel at Murrayfield, uh, ready to go with you know uh, the rest of the squad behind you. It's uh, it's an incredible feeling, and uh, you know certainly one I never took for granted. But you've obviously had thought about the future as well. You know, what is the plan for you if you know going forward in life? You know what's your aspirations and goals out with rugby? Yeah, well, well, first as you said, I'm. Um, I'm still on contract um, here in Claremont, um, so I'll keep playing professional rugby, I think, um, for as long as I can, really, because uh, my, my body's good, uh, my mind's uh, good as well, and I'm really enjoying it, and I think that the step back from international rugby will just allow me to, to just have a few breaks in the season as well, which I've never had before, and just uh, stay mentally fresh. In terms of uh, the long-term uh, goal is, um, certainly, I'll probably look at coaching um, as, as something uh, I may go into um, at some point down the track. Um, I'm pretty passionate about that as well, and I want to maybe try and stay involved in, in the game if I can. Um, if not, you know, I work closely with my, my agency uh, back in Scotland uh, through Raven Shepherd, and, uh, and they're excellent with some of the off-field stuff as well. So, I've, uh, hopefully, a few options away from rugby as well if, if I choose to go down that route. But uh, I think. As, as you mentioned before, I, I'm somebody that's pretty passionate. I wear my heart on my sleeve, so whether I could be prized away from uh, the rugby field, uh, that remains to be seen. You're clearly very popular, not just in Scotland but around the world, and tremendous support over the years for you as a player and as a person. So, what, what would your message be to all those fans that have supported you over the years? What would you like to say to them? Well, I'd, I'd like to say just thank you, I suppose, and because I think. Maybe they underestimate what, what it means to, to players to just to get little messages of support here and there, and sometimes in pressured environments, um, a little message of that just they go a long way. Whether it be from whether it people coming to the stadiums, whether it, uh, social media messages online, or, or people taking time out to phone you, or it's been massive, and it just it all just adds up to. To making it that more special, I suppose. Um, so yeah, so just a massive thank you to to everybody that's ever supported me and, and lended me the, their help over the years. I think pride is is, is, is something that goes along with uh, wearing the jersey uh, of your nation, and, and certainly I'm, I'm a proud Scotsman and. A, uh, I think alongside my family and, and friends, it's been an awesome journey and, uh, and certainly one we, we've enjoyed. And uh, hopefully, you know, when I sit back and look back on it, it's something I'll be proud of.
It's been a wonderful day of rugby at the home of a game in Scotland. Smiles all round.